Well, I forgot my glasses today, so I hope I'm all right. Uh, anyways, <laughs> you know, as we read the we read the news, we see everything that's going on uh, Middle East and all over the world. You know, you have to stop, uh, and we realize what God's word says about giving us hope. And so I thought about that this week, and I thought all of us go through different things on how that, that grace gives us hope. And that's what we're going to look at today. Let's pray. Father, we're just grateful that we can be here today. And Lord, each and every one of us go through different things, uh, different trials, different adversity. Father, we just pray that we would understand your grace has been led us in worship today in such a way that it would encourage us to know we're imperfect, we need you, and Father, you can get us through this life and the world that we're living in today that we can still have hope. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, as we get older, we seem to experience uh, different things in life. And, you know, I want to do this, but I have a hard time doing this. It, the, my daughter had to go to the doctor last week, and uh, she asked me to babysit the kids for why she was at the doctor. And, uh, man, I can't do that. I, I mean, I can, but, uh, wow, uh, what happened, you know? And I did something that that I haven't done in a long time, and... Uh, the second middle child, Duke, looked at me, and, and his daughter, who's a totter, which is my granddaughter, said, uh, Papa D, I think Shiloh, and I'm like, no, don't tell me, don't tell me, <laughs> I don't want to do this, and so uh, I had to change her diaper, and I, I couldn't hardly stand back up, and uh, <laughs> I'm seriously, and, and so anyways, uh, it is just, you know, when, when you get to the place to where, like, how, how did I get here? What happened, you know? And uh, we get to that place to where we need help. And we have to realize that, that we need each other. And we turn around and say, hey, I, I don't know what happened here, but here's where I'm at. And when we realize that, that as we do get older in life, we try and be that we can do this on our own, and, and we can't. And the Bible tells us that, that grace, God's grace, always give us hope. And when we realize that, his word also says that by grace that we have been saved, not of works. And I want us to look at a verse today and as we look at that, that verse, uh, we're going to look at it in John, in 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9. I, I heard something, you know, I still so believe it applies to the Bible uh, that I wanted to share with you in, in, in how and what we're living in today. And I, I really do believe, not to scare everybody, whatever, the, there's the Bible says that we go towards the end times and watch what happens. And there's two things that, that, that really we can point to, and, and one uh, of those is the lawlessness and the coldness of people and, uh, and how that we need to stay tender during this time. And so I'm listening to a statistic that I heard uh, and I couldn't, it kind of jolted me because I thought I knew what he, they, where they were going with it. To share this with, talk about the airlines. And it said, uh, the person who was giving this statistic on the news, and I was catching it on YouTube, it said, uh, it was talking about all of you have seen people getting angry on, on the airlines and altercations that are having with each other or, or with the flight attendants. And it said, uh, it started out, and this is what the, the person said, and there have been a hundred incidents, and I thought that they, they were going to say, this year, okay? And the, the commentator said there has been a hundred altercations or incidents on the airlines just 
this week. I said, what? And he said, and then he went on to say, and I wrote it down, there's been 3,000 since the first of the year. And I thought, what, what does that mean? You know, when you hear all these things, something thrown out like that, you think, and I, I try and think about what does that mean? It means that, that somehow, some way, people are, are angry, and we know that. We can get angry about life. It's not just the mask, or it's not just, you know, the person. Something, somehow, some way, that person has gotten angry about life. Taking it out on someone else. We, we need an outlet. What, what is that outlet? What am I getting to? Well, what does God tell us that we need today to know that who we can go to and how that, that grace gives us hope? 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9. If we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Two things that I hear uh, that are not, that don't happen in, in churches today, they say there are two things that aren't being preached upon. One, uh, over 50% of churches don't talk about sin and over 50% of churches don't talk about the end times. Now, I know I need help. I know that you need help. And the way that that begins and it happens is that if we confess our sin, that grace, that God's grace, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You know the thing that, that, that I don't know if you're like this, if, if you're a parent, that, that, that you, you, you beat yourself as you get older, that you look back in, in, your, in your parenting with your kids in life and you beat yourself up about it. If I should have done this different, should have done this. Different. So, I remember one time there was something bothered me about our middle daughter that, that you know, I, I got on her about something and I never talked to her about it. And it wasn't a big deal. It was like we were in a hurry and she kind of fell down and I was kind of yelling at her, hurry up, we got to go, we're going to miss it, you know, and I, I should have done it anyway. So, uh, it was always bothering me. So, years went by and I sat her down and I said, hey, I, I want to talk to you about something. I said, I... You did this and said, I just want you to know I'm sorry for that. And, and she said, I thought, I, I'll never forget what she said to me. She goes, Dad, she goes, I don't remember that. And this is what I want you to know when, when God does things in our life. When we go to him and we confess whatever it is, that cleansing factor is, is working in our lives. It helps us in relationships. It helps us to see better. It makes us go forward because we're imperfect. And God says, if you come to me through my son, Jesus Christ, I will forgive you and you can go forward. That's the hope that we have today. Even if I stop the message right there, that's the hope that we have today. I want to challenge you and encourage you to be sensitive to that in your, in your daily life and to know that you and I, and, and we can get through this life. What else does the good Lord tell us? Well, look at, look at another passage of Scripture I want us to go to in uh, Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16. God's Word tells us to... Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Let me read it again. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may find mercy and grace. Here it is, in the time of need. What is it, where is it that, that, that you're needing help? What do you, what do you turn to? What does the world turn to? The world turns to anything today except the Lord. They're turning to anything imaginable to, to, to do whatever it can do to, to help them. You know, I heard something that also, that if you, a million dollars, if you take, you can take $100 bills and to make a million dollars, you can take with $100 bills and it will fit 
in a briefcase. So, let me say it again. A million dollars will fit in a briefcase by $100 bills. And I thought, you know, if you put that somewhere, the briefcase, okay, in the world we live in today, and you put a Bible there, and anybody and everybody could make the choice what they wanted to help them in a time of need, what would they choose? And when we are in life and and we need hope and we're in time of need, I want you to know no matter what it looks like, God says you can come to me. I'm there for you. I know you better than anybody. I know your thoughts. I know your trials. I know your temptation. I know what you're going through. And because of that, I want you to know today, because of God's grace, that we can come boldly, no matter what it is, no matter what we're taking place, no matter what we're going through, and have mercy in God's throne room in a time of need. And he says, I'm there. I'm, gonna, I'm there to help you. God is there to help you, and he's there to help me. All we have to do is to believe enough that he is, and we always have to go back to this, he will help us. He is the answer. No matter what it looks like, he's the answer. I have to tell myself that. You need to remind yourself that, that, that God's grace, God's grace gives us hope. Mercy. The Bible tells us, as you look back there again, to, it's where the prince of all eternity, Jesus Christ sets through his throne of grace, we can find help at a time of need. See, I always tell people the devil has power in this world, but God has authority, the ultimate authority. And if we always go to him, no matter what it looks like, he's going to work it out. Let's look at one more verse today. where it says where God's grace gives us hope. Titus 2.13, many of you know this. We quote this a lot at our church in the time that we're living in. Looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, the Bible says our life is a vapor. And if we look and we see Jesus and everything that's going on. He is coming back. He's coming back a whole lot sooner than what we think. And he tells us that you can have hope right now every day, including me. We can have hope knowing he's going to get us through. His grace gives us hope if we always look to the blessed hope. You know, I know you're astounded, and I am too, by what we're seeing take place in our society today, and you know, I, I kind of got me this week. I don't know if you saw it on the news that that uh, that I don't know if you know this in California, but if you if you take or steal under nine hundred fifty dollars, you won't be arrested. I don't know if you knew that or not, but uh, whatever it might be, and it showed these two guys. If you saw that walking out of a TJ Maxx, if you saw that. And they just had big bags of clothes. And the, and the one person they interviewed said they actually see people come in the stores with a calculator to see what it adds up to, that it's under $950 to walk out the store. They were interviewing the governor of California about this. And this is what he said, and this is what the commentator said. He said, no, 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 he said, the crime's not up in California. And then went on, and the commentator went further after it. He says, well, no wonder the crime's not up in California. You can, get, you can, do, you can take whatever you want. They're not gonna, you're not going to be arrested. What are we living in? What are we going to see next? I don't know. But I know today, and I want to I leave you with this, that they're on such, to know that you and I have hope. Hope to get, Lord, give me wisdom on how, for my kids and my grandkids, Lord, show me what to do when I fail. Lord, help me to go through, and God will do it. How does he do that? You know, uh, 
when I grew up and, and Chuck was a lot older than me, so um, <laughs> anyways, I was thinking about something, but that's all right. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to tell about that. But anyways, so because he was a lot older, that I had to still go with my parents everywhere. My dad would go a lot of places in the United States and speak. Many of you know my father was a pilot. And through the Lawson Foundation here in, in Akron, he was able to use that plane. And he would preach all over the place in the country and South America and Mexico and all these different places. And we f would fly in it. It was turboprop, it was a twin engine Aztec. And we would fly and we would get in the plane. And I would hear him sometimes, you know, because you only have such high an altitude you can go or you can ice the props up. So we would fly to a certain flight and um, he would turn around and say, hey, we're going we're gonna to have to fly because he was what, what is called instrument rated. In other words, we're going through dark clouds or there might be a thunderstorm there, so we're going to have to fly through this area by just relying on the instruments. And I never forgot that. And I always log that in my mind. He was instrument rated and we could fly through what we couldn't see because he relied on the instruments. He trusted. He knew that they would get him through even though he couldn't see. Are we relying on, on God's word when we can't see? God gives us hope, blessed hope. What do we look to? And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. We look to Jesus and we know, I want you to know today, including myself, no matter what we face, no matter what you go through, he can get us through. I want to encourage you with that today. Looking to the blessed, not just hope, the blessed hope. You have hope today by God's grace. Through his son, Jesus Christ, you have hope. And you can say, Lord, will you give me wisdom through your word? I heard a, a theologian speak this week. He's talking about the end times. And he said, always remember, as we get closer to what's going to pl take place, keep our eyes on the Middle East. And he, we know that. And he said, Israel... When it comes to a clock and where we're headed in this world, Israel is God's hour hand. Jerusalem is God's minute hand. And then he said, the Temple Mount, where someday the temple will be rebuilt, is the second hand. And I thought, you know, that's such a great illustration that we know as we look to the Middle East and we know that we're going somewhere. And I want you to know that you have hope today, no matter what we see, no matter what takes place, whether it's me or you or whoever it might be, we have hope that we can come to the throne of grace, have his mercy and grace as long as we look to his word and his Holy Spirit will direct you, even though you can't see, no matter what it is, if we look to him. He can get us through. God's grace gives us hope. Let's pray. As our heads are bowed today, Lord, I, I, I'm just so grateful for all of you today being here and all those that are watching. And if, if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, we give what's always called an invitation. We, we never want to have a time where we don't because there's so many that are watching and that are here. God's word says in Romans that for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved no matter who you are, no matter what you've done, no matter where you're at, God can give you hope. You say, what do I have to do, Dallas? You just pray, Jesus, forgive me a sinner. Doesn't matter your background, Baptist, Catholic, whatever it might be, Presbyterian, that's not, that's not what this is about. It's about a relationship with Jesus. You say, Lord, Jesus, I believe that you're God's son. 
I believe you died on the cross for me. And I ask you to come into my heart to forgive me for all of my sins, cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And from this day forward, help me to live by your resurrection power. Father, we come to you today. Lord, whether it's all throughout the airwaves or whether it's here, Lord, if there's someone here, or even in this place, that would like to walk forward and I can pray with them, Lord, we thank you that your grace gives us hope. If they don't know you today as their Savior, as Ben leads us, at this time, they'll come forward and I can just pray with them in Jesus' name.